I was 14 when I was in high school and I first started to sell marijuana and dabble into smoking marijuana and cocaine and I was really trying to numb all the pain that I was going through with my parents' divorce, the lack of supervision that, you know, that leads to and that causes. Um, I had an older cousin that um, was big time in the streets and he used to hustle and, and sell drugs. And he really took me under his wing when I was younger, when I had no supervision and guidance or direction. And uh, he really just showed me how to make quick money and I really fell in love with it. And then I went to Tucson High and I just started selling over there. And I had a lot of people that would buy from me. One night I was in my car and I remember I got a phone call. Hey, I need a couple ounces. So it was in the kind of rough area, side of town. So I pulled up. My friend came outside, quick hand-to-hand -hand exchange through the window. Then I remember pulling out and I was smoking. I had loud music on and all of a sudden I see a cop behind me. Then all of a sudden I see the lights. So I put my joint out and I pull over. He sent me to step out the vehicle. I stepped out the vehicle. Then they immediately started searching my car they found what I had in there. They found the the quarter pound. They found a scale. They found $400 on me. They found a ba box of baggies. So at this point, I was I didn't know what to think. I they told me that they're seizing my car, that I was arrested for felony sales. I wasn't really scared at that point because I kind of knew what I was getting myself into when I started. They sentenced me to uh, three years of probation with the misdemeanor. At that time, I felt like I, I got away with it. I started selling high-grade marijuana. I started to numb myself with prescription painkillers. It started out just a weekend thing with the female that I used to date. Then I remember one particular time I tried to stop one weekend and I got physically sick. I was doing a couple Percocet, 30 milligrams, one on Friday, two on Saturday. So at that point, I was using for two years and then prescription painkillers started to get expensive, 15, 20 dollars each pill. So I started to sell more medical marijuana to supply my habit then I just couldn't afford it anymore and I remember one day somebody in introduced me to heroin and said it's a lot cheaper you can get a lot more and it does the same thing so I started smoking heroin and it just spiraled out of control I thought I had a handle on it and that's when the enemy the devil started lying to me, saying that I can handle it. And the devil plays tricks on you where you think you're having fun and you think that you can you can do it on your own, that you can control it. And that wasn't the case. It had a control on me. I started waking up sick every morning. I started falling deeper into a depression, deeper into a hate for myself. I hated what I was becoming. I hated everything about myself. I projected the hate to other people. I was violent. I would sell drugs and be ruthless to the people I was selling to. I was really aggressive. I was, at one point, I was just selling medical marijuana to supply my habit of heroin. I started falling deeper into my depression, the hate for myself the disgust of myself. At this point, I was so far from God. God was the farthest on my mind. I grew up with the knowledge of Him. I grew up in a Christian home. My parents were in ministry. 
but the divorce that they went through at a young age scarred me. The only way I dealt with it was self-medication and it carried me all the way into the point that I was at where I was doing an eight ball of heroin a day. I had no value of life. I had no feelings. I was so numb. I was in a state of a bliss at this point. I got reacquainted with a friend of mine from high school that I met while I was in high school named Daniel. And uh, we started uh, hanging out. He was a union electrician, but he he would hang out. He was laid off at the time, so he would hang out with me and we would, we would sail together and do little things like that. And we got really close. I loved him. He loved me. We, we were inseparable at this time. And it got so bad that my parents finally intervened me. And I went to rehab in 2015 in California. And that's when my life started to take a change and at the point, at the time, I really didn't understand, but God had had me in, in His hand the whole time, and I didn't realize this. I was getting clean in rehab. I came out, and the first thing I wanted to do was to see my friend, to show him how good I was. I was, and and in rehab, they really give you a sense of self-sufficiency like I can do it on my own I can stay clean on my own you know I don't need anything I'm gonna be an addict forever but I don't have to I don't have to use that was the mentality without Christ I was relying on my own strength and it was never gonna work and when I got out of rehab it was in February by March and uh, beginning of April I was right back just doing a lot of meth. I started hanging out with my friend again. Friday, I was going through some issues with this girl that I was seeing at the time. And I remember calling him around 11 o'clock at night. And I was real, I was emotional, I was, I was crying. I just was uh, broken. I called him and I told him, hey, what are you doing right now, D? And he was like, oh, I'm just hanging out, what's up? I go, hey, bro, I really need you to, you know, I found some stuff out. I really want to talk to you. I really need to hang out with you, bro. I respected him. I, I trusted him. So I told him, hey, you, uh, can you pick me up in a little bit? I just want to talk to you, bro. I just need to hang out with you. He told me, yeah, okay, I'll be right there. So it was about around 11 o'clock at night. I uh, stayed up for about an hour or two. And I fell asleep. So I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and to a text. Um, I had like two or three texts. One of them said, hey, they shot your friend D last night in the head. It was kind of like a, it, was, it, it seemed like a dream. I, I didn't really, I didn't believe in my text back. Who? Who? What friend? What D? And I didn't get her text back. So I immediately started calling people that knew him and no answer. I started calling him. No answer. No answer. And um, then finally he uh, somebody answered his phone and then hung up. So I realized, oh, okay, he's all right. You know, so I left it at that. And then um, later on, about an hour or two goes by and then I... I started uh, searching the news, and that's when I seen his picture of the car he was driving, and it was true. And I just didn't, I didn't, you know, he he was shot and he was killed, and I didn't know how to take that. I I just I broke down immediately. I just fell. I God was further from my mind. I just just didn't know what to think and. And uh, I mean, I should have been there with them. He was on the way to come pick me up. And and at this point, you know, word on the street, it was the cartel and they shot him. And he made it to his car. 
he got away and later on down the street he crashed into a Circle K gas pump at this point my my whole heart was broken my you know I had just talked to him I just was with him I just told him I loved him and I didn't realize that this whole time this was happening because it took his death to bring me to a point where I realized that I needed God I needed Jesus Christ I needed his forgiveness I felt I felt a, a, the presence of God just fall on me and it was like a, a feeling I can't even explain it was a unsurmountable peace it was love it was his forgiveness it was it was peace in my heart. It was my soul was getting tormented by my best friend's death. It was getting tormented by these drugs. It was getting tormented about by hustling and and the life that I was bound to. I was I was a slave to sin and it had a grip on me that I, I thought I could control, but I couldn't. And I remember just crying and, and hearing a still small voice in my spirit say, trust me. And then again, I heard it again, trust me. And I started crying more and I, and I was alone and I just, and at this time I just had no peace. And, and when I heard that voice, I kind of ignored it. I didn't know what to think. And then about a week later, I woke up from a nap and I remember just having this joy, tears in my eyes and joy and just peace, this 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 blanket of peace and love. I had nothing left, I had nothing left to offer and I surrendered everything to Christ. I fell on my knees and now I'm free. I've been clean and sober off of marijuana, I've been clean and sober off of meth and heroin. And that's the power of God. That's the, the deliverance that he offers. And I wouldn't trade that for any other feeling in this world. Just having that peace in my heart and that assurance that I will be going to heaven if I die when I leave this earth. Somebody like me, an addict, a drug dealer, uh, the work of Jesus Christ paid that for me and paid it for other people. And I just encourage you guys, if you don't have a relationship with God or Jesus, if he could do that for me, he could do that for anybody.